Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes Now This is going to be A technique a short a short short technique I guess how short would be your only you know your choice so I'd like you to think about something that is something that you don't want to do not because it's awful not because it's dangerous not because it's you know harmful or anything like that something that you don't want to do because uh, your anxiety level raises when you think about it so it could be something like going on the bus, going to work, getting up, going to the shop, having a bath, I mean, cooking food, and this might, for for our, for some people this might sound absolutely ridiculous, but for those with mental health issues, uh, depression, anxiety, stress, you know, a combination of all kinds of things, sometimes the simplest of tasks also get a little bit emotional when I even say it because I have the same issue myself. Sometimes the simplest of tasks are almost uh, feel impossible, feel like climbing a mountain. Something like just running a bath, getting a bath full of water and having a bath, or cooking some food. Or it could be something, you know, like getting on a bus, leaving your house. So I'm not necessarily talking about something, as I said earlier, something big. But this is still big, you know. I don't see any point in... Well, I'm not going to sit here and mock somebody because they're struggling to get out of bed or because they're struggling to, you know, wash because I know what that's like. For me, I know I don't want to, I don't know what it's like for other people, but I do know what it's like for me and I know what it's like to for me again to feel like almost feel disgusted at myself. because I can't do something that's so simple in my head sort of I'm having a go at myself and that's something that I think those of us that do that need to stop doing that if you can't be kind to yourself then who can you be kind to you know and I'm not being all um esoteric spiritual love yourself of course it's, you know that's a brilliant thing but I can't I'm not trying to do it in that way I'm being very I'm doing it in a very basic 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 human way there's nothing spiritual about this at all it's being kind to yourself so as to not ridicule yourself or put yourself down and you know what some people listening to me would probably think he keeps going on about this be kind to yourself do something nice for yourself be gentle with yourself well for the rest of my life I'm going to be saying this because it's really important 
I mean, there's lots of books, lots of audio, you know, there's multi-million seller books that tell you to love yourself. There's religions based kind of on that, on the, you know, but I say let's kind of start with being kind to yourself. And the good thing about it is, although it might be a start, it never ends because being kind to yourself is something you need to do every single day of your life. Being kind to yourself. The way you would to somebody that had just been in a car accident. And I don't mean tiptoeing around. You have to buy yourself flowers or grapes or a card or, you know, but just be gentle. Or what I would do in that situation is when I visit someone in hospital, I like to make them laugh. But that's just me, you know, I have it might be partly due to nerves, but also that's just what I do. I like to um, add a bit of humour to a situation where they kind of, there almost isn't any humour, but in a kind way. And you might think, oh, what is he talking about now? He's talking about what? Okay, I'm talking about aiming it at yourself. I could make a new recording every day for the next 50 years on being kind to yourself and talk from a different stance and talk about different things. And maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I should have a podcast just called Be Kind to Yourself. And maybe I will now actually talk saying that. It's so important. You know, and it's so easy. So if someone says to you, you know, if you read a book, and there's some amazing books out there, and I've read a lot of books, uh, you know, in the kind of self-help, um, motivational, I don't know what you want to call it, sector. And... When I used to see the words, you know, you need to love yourself. I, I didn't know where to go with that. I really struggled with that idea. And when I read, I was told, oh, you can't love another person unless you love yourself. Again, that I found that very upsetting and also complete bullshit. It's, I've been in positions where I've absolutely hated myself but it didn't stop me loving other people I'm not talking loving everyone but it didn't change if I was sitting at my flat or my room in the past and really been the lowest ebb in depression I still loved my nan I wasn't thinking about her and I wasn't, that love wasn't being expressed. But I still loved her. The idea that I couldn't love someone else unless I loved myself. I never loved myself. My whole life. So it's quite nice if you can, so it's those kinds of cliches I found got in the way of, sometimes got in the way of me um, being or progressing or thinking that I had progressed. It was almost like a, an impossible hurdle. It was almost felt like I was being told that the only way I could ever be happy is if I was six foot four tall 
and I'm five foot eight. I'm never going to be six foot four. Never going to happen. In fact, I could probably stand on my own shoulders and I'd still be shorter. So <laughs> too short. So it's not. It almost felt like, you know, and you know, an impossible hurdle, as I said. But being kind to yourself is not an impossible hurdle. Being kind to yourself is something you can do right now. In fact, you are doing it right now by listening to me. Because there's something, it's not really about listening to me necessarily, but there's a a kindness towards yourself by sitting down, maybe you're lying down, and listening to something positive. Whether it's, you know, it just happens to be me in this situation, but it could easily have been something else. You're giving yourself a break. You're giving yourself some time out of the other stuff that maybe you was worrying about before. And when you listen to me, that stuff's not valid in this moment. You're just, you know, focusing on what I'm saying. And you're noticing how you feel physically, emotionally. You feel more relaxed when you hear my voice. And the more you listen, the more relaxed you feel. I don't mean in time-wise, although there is that as well. You may feel more relaxed now than you did 10 minutes ago. But when you listen to me regularly, you feel more relaxed. Just It's part of the process. Which is why I make lots of different recordings instead of just the same recording because that would be incredibly boring it might be just as useful I don't know but it'd be boring to keep and I've done that I've found people that I like listening to in the past you know back in the days when you'd get a CD and that would be what they would you know they'd produce a CD and that's all they had Maybe they wrote a book. This is before the internet. And I'm like, okay. I love this CD. I had one that helped me to stop smoking. It wasn't to stop smoking, but it helped me to relax whilst I was going through the stop smoking period in 2000. Well, 1999. But it was the same recording. And she, uh, Sally Redfield, I can't remember the lady. Beautiful voice, beautiful sound, the music, and it was great, absolutely perfection. The recording. This is long before, well, this is what? Six, over six years before I even started making my own recordings. But it was the same recording. I wanted more. I wanted to be able to hear her every day. But saying something different. Same voice. Maybe even the same music would be fine. Just, you know, (laughs) saying something different. Um, So. I realise I've gone in a little bit of a different direction to how I started off here. I still know what I was going to say and I'm still going to come back to that so be kind to yourself and part of the reason why I go into more detail about the you know because I say at the end of every recording remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy and it sounds it can sound empty it can sound like a platitude Which is why I describe and explain in more detail every now and then what I actually mean when I say that. Because I don't want to be saying platitudes, even if they are known as platitudes. I want to be able to justify and explain what I say. 
and why I say it. If I can. I hope that makes sense. So when I started saying it out loud about the, you know, some of the things that may be an issue, I thought I needed to address it. Just to remind people that who are, that actually might be having a go at themselves. They might be uh, being rude to, them, to themselves about it, putting themselves down. Oh, I'm no good because I can't do this, or I should be able to do this, la la la. Well, that's why you need to be kind to yourself. So I'm going to come to the actual point. And you might say, yeah, it was 20 minutes in and you've not even said what it is yet. Well, I've got the setup. You know, you've got, you've got the thing that's... It's a pill that's too big to swallow, you know, as a metaphor, as an analogy. It's a hurdle that's just too high to jump over. It's not impossible, but it's, it's just too high. It feels too high at the moment. And you need the hurdle to be lowered, basically. Or you need it to just dissolve. So what I want you to do is imagine in your hand all the energy connected to that thing that you want to do or maybe that you don't want to do but you maybe need to do going out going to the shops going on a bus doing the washing up uh, something that's when you think about it at the moment it the tension or the stress is a bit overwhelming it feels like it's it's a big task at the moment so it could be anything you choose what it is because it's your life your experience and I want you to focus on the the energy of that the the stress and the anxiety that's connected to that and allow it all to move into the palm of your hand and then just take the shape of a big pill a pill that's way too big to swallow. I mean, it can be, it could almost fill the uh, the palm of your hand, or maybe just you know a little bit, but it's still going to be a big, big pill. You can give it a color. Just notice what color it is. Doesn't matter. And as it forms, you can see it there. And all the emotion connected to this event that you perhaps need to do but haven't wanted to do. You put it off, maybe. It's felt overwhelming. And literally is a pill that's too big to swallow. So as you look at that pill, knowing that you won't be able to swallow it, it's just too big. I mean, literally, it is too big. And then you look over on the table and you see that there's a glass of water. And you realise that the tablet is soluble. It will dissolve in the water. Ah. Oh. That's the solution for a tablet that's too big to swallow. So what you can do is you can just drop it into the water and watch it fizz. 
And you would have seen something similar to this at some point in your life. Alka Selska, I think that's one of the things. You've got vitamins that uh, are soluble, all kinds of things throughout your life, especially for children. Anadine, tablets. I could never take tablets when I was a kid, I didn't like them. But I used to have everything soluble. And as you watch it fizzing, notice how it's shrinking. Notice how it changes shape. And notice how it's now... Maybe notice the colour of the water as well. And the bubbles and... Maybe you can smell and realise that it's actually, it's a really tasty liquid. It's nice. It could be strawberry, banana, vanilla, anything that you like. A, a, a flavour that you enjoy. And now that it's completely dissolved... You can just look at that glass. And what you realise is that inside that glass and those bubbles, what's actually dissolved and gone is the stress and the anxiety and the tension. That's all disappeared. But what's left is the energy. which is now being converted from negative energy to positive energy. So now the contents of that glass are positive, energetic, which actually, when you drink it, gives you the positive energy to feel confident about doing that thing that before you felt negative about. Now you're going to feel confident. And just seeing the water in the glass still bubbling and, you know, complete positivity. And you can see it there. And when you're ready, if you choose, You can drink that water. So what I'm going to do is just say, drink it now. And drink as much or as little as you choose. That's right. <clears throat> as you imagine drinking that, you can feel the whole of your body so relaxed and calm and your mind and as you think about that thing that you were thinking about before something that you perhaps needed to do you notice that you feel differently You feel so calm and positive. So calm and positive. Knowing now that you are capable of doing that thing if you choose to do so, you can do it. Feeling relaxed, at ease.
And also you can feel pleased with yourself because with kindness you've overcome that hurdle, that temporary hurdle. Feeling more positive. Now. More relaxed. And that brings us to the end of this recording. And you can do this and repeat this exercise as often as you choose. Maybe listen to this recording a few times. And each time you hear my voice, you find it much easier, much easier to relax. And let negative thoughts from your mind just be released. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening. And remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.